Gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Big shout out to you guys out there who have been supporting me along my journey to see if it is actually possible to find a traditional relationship in a country other than my own. If you are new here and you are thinking about looking for a traditional relationship in a country such as Ukraine, make sure you subscribe to my channel because you're gonna learn a lot of stuff here that you're not gonna learn anywhere else. So the topic of today's video is something that has divided us. Guys that are looking to do this, guys that have gone and done it, guys that have done it and are successful. There is a topic that splits us straight down the middle. You're either on one side or you're on the other side. And that topic is, should you use one of these romance companies, these matchmaking companies, or should you just go over there and meet women naturally on the street? <laughs> So you're either one or the other. It's not very often that you meet someone and they, they, they say, this is a good idea to use one of these agencies. And it's also a good idea to go out on the street. It's not very often you hear that. Most of the time people will say, these agencies are scammers and you should stay far, far away from them. Or they say use the agencies because you know what you're getting and the agencies are trustworthy. And I could be accused of being uh, in one of these two categories because I have only used agencies. And it's not because I am against going out and meeting women on the street or at a mall or anything like that. It's just that I never did it when it came to Ukraine. I'll give you a real quick one minute background update that'll sort of maybe help you understand a little bit where I'm coming from. So since 2015, I've probably visited about 20 to 30 different countries. And that was sort of in between like the off parts of the relationship that I had that was about 10 years long. Prior to that, I had another long relationship. So from the age of my early 20s, I've really just been in long relationships. But what I found is that when I went overseas, almost always i would meet a woman just randomly on the street or in the mall or at the nightclub or somewhere and i would end up with her like for like a week or for a few days or something so i never had any problems meeting women when i traveled and i don't think that i'm anything uh, special at all and prior coming on this journey that i'm on at the moment i actually had quite low self-esteem i was i guess you could say i'd sort of been beaten down a little bit but what I found is when I was overseas, I became a different person. And even to this day, I still really don't know why that is. But one thing for sure is that when I went overseas, I never ever went over there for women. I never went over there thinking, oh, I'm gonna spend the day picking up women at the beach, or I'm gonna go to the nightclub and pick up women. I just went over there just for myself, just to have fun, just to travel around, and just to have a new experience. But I would always end up meeting a woman somewhere, and some of the stories are so incredibly random, like you probably wouldn't even believe them. So when I decided to try my hand at doing this uh, Ukraine dating, I just kind of thought that if I used a company, I would have a high success rate because I had a pretty high success rate not using one. So the times that I've been over to Ukraine, I've actually been in relationships that I've met through these, through these um, dating companies or these agencies. So I've never really experienced just going out and just doing my own normal thing. So it could be said that I'm a little bit biased towards the actual agencies. But in this video, I wanna talk about some pros and cons with both of them from what I can see at this point right here in my journey. So I'm gonna talk about uh, using a romance company. I hate saying that word. It just, it sounds so sleazy and creepy. So um, when, I, when I say we're gonna use a company, I'm talking about a romance company, I'm talking about a matchmaking company or a dating agency. So I'm just gonna use the word company. So first, with the cons, when it comes to using a company is the obvious one, which is the cost. You have to pay for the service, which is which is normal, right? It's a service that you're paying for. They have, uh, it's a business, they have staff, they're gonna provide a service, you have to pay for it. Some people see that as a con, but it is what it is. So you gotta take that into consideration whether you're choosing from the two is the actual cost of it as well. And the cost can be anywhere from $2,000 all the way up to maybe $8,000. So Bear that in mind. So second one is scammers. Now, depending on the company, right? Not all companies have scammers, but you have to be you have to do your own due diligence when it comes to this. If a guy is coming over there and a scammer wants to find a guy who's from the West, who has money, who's looking for love, and she wants to take advantage of him, she knows where to go. She knows to go to a company that will accept scammers. So you have to be careful that by using one of these companies, you choose the right company. You don't go to one. Where, there is gonna, where the scammers are allowed to be. Okay, next one is that you have a limited selection. So some of these tour companies, they have a huge selection and some of them have a small selection. And it's, when you go to them, it actually gets even smaller, funny enough. But you have a limited selection. So there are only a certain amount of women 
that are signed up with the agency that you can actually date. And if you pay money to that agency and you go there and you realize that they're all way too old or than, than what you are or that you're looking for, or that they're just, you just don't have any physical attraction and there's no chemistry, that's it. So if you've paid $5,000 and you do that, that's the end of that. So that is a con. Okay, so what about pros? What's so good about using one of these companies? I mean, a lot of people are using them. There must be something good about it, right? Well, there is some good stuff. Okay, so the first one is, usually the language barrier is not a problem because they will assign you someone that's gonna help you understand her and she's gonna understand you. You'll get a translator and it's not, it's not so much of a problem than if you were to go out on the street or something like that. You've got someone there that's gonna take care of the communication between the two of you. And if language is not a big deal for you, you don't care whether she speaks English or not, this is gonna be good for you. So that's gonna have to be a pro. Second one is, they usually are very well organized. The ones that I've been on, um, they are, they're pretty well organized. Like your, your hotel is taken care of, they can come and pick you up from the airport. Of course, you're paying for all of that stuff, it's all included in the fee. But they usually have a structure. So day one, you're doing this, day two, you're gonna be doing that, then you're gonna go for a walk around the city, day four you, is the next thing. On the last day, you've got like some event or something like that. It's all well organized, so you know exactly what you're doing. And if you're one of those guys that sort of has trouble sort of uh, you know, you've got to have some structure in what you're doing. It's perfect for you. One other thing that I believe, and people can debate this if they want, and they can tell me that I'm wrong, but I believe that because you're going there, you have a limited selection, right? Well, you might be selecting from 100 women, let's just say. So if there are 100 women meeting 20 guys, let's just flip it around and look at it from the other side for a second. Instead of going, well, there's only 100 women that the guys are meeting, let's just look at it from the other side. There's not that many guys that the women are meeting. So for them, if they are in this company, they'll settle for something that may not be perfect, right? So we're always talking about like guys want something perfect. Well, let, what about them? What about the woman? Don't they want something that's perfect as well? But if they've only got to make a choice from 20 guys or 10 guys or 15 guys or whatever it is, then they have to make a choice from one of these. They're obviously motivated to find a relationship. I always push like you have to be realistic. I believe that that realistic threshold can be squished out somewhat if you use one of these, a legit, I'm gonna say legit, agency or co company. You can stretch out the age gap, you can stretch out whether you're basing the realism on appearance. You can stretch that out, I do believe. Another pro, and I think this is a pro, for some guys it's a pro, is that you don't need to have any game whatsoever. You can be a bumbling idiot and you're more likely to be successful than you would be if you went out on the street or to a club. You can have no game. It's advisable to have some game. If you want to say, I even, I hate that word, the game. But what I'm saying is like, you know, you, you have to be, you need to be sort of stylish. You need to come across as though you're confident. I think that if you're using a, one of these romance companies, you can get away with not having that to some degree. And it's basically because of the reason that I've just said before, that the woman only have a small selection to choose from. So their standard of what they would normally accept Maybe a little bit lower than, say, a woman that is out on the street that hasn't really thought about this whole dating company thing. All right, so meeting women naturally. I've called this meeting them naturally because it's, uh, I originally wrote uh, meeting women on the street, but that sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit weird. So we're just going to refer to this as naturally. Okay, so what are the pros of meeting a woman naturally? So you're less likely to meet a scammer. Because even though I talk about scammers a lot, there's a lot of scam stuff out on the internet. There's not a lot of scammers. It's not like all the women in the country are scammers. It's only a small, small percentage, but they go to these companies, they go to Tinder, they go to uh, Badoo, because they know Westerners are gonna be coming there, and, they, and that's where they're gonna catch them. So we're only seeing a small percentage, but it seems like a lot. Women walking around on the street are not walking around thinking, oh, where's the next victim? Oh, there's a Western guy, let's go take his money, let's scam him, let's pretend we're in a relationship with him. It's just not happening that way. So if you're meeting women on the street, or not even on the street, ugh, but if you're meeting women like just naturally, as you would, maybe she works at the coffee cart, maybe she's a bartender, maybe she's uh, working at a library, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna find a scammer. It's gonna be, the chances of that happening are so low. So that is a huge pro. The selection of women is huge. <laughs> it sounds so bad. The selection of women as if you can just go and just, I'll have her and I'll have her. Like, you make, like you're picking donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. But it's true. 
like it's it, it's not like you have been given a catalog by one of these companies on the way to one of their events that says here are the hundred women just go through them and just see which ones you like and you can go on a date later it's there's none of that it's that's none of that stuff it's basically just well if you see a woman that you like just go and say hello, ask her for directions, pretend that you're lost, or go and buy a coffee if she's working at the coffee cart. And if you've ever been over to Ukraine, or been to Odessa, or been to um, Kiev, you'll know that there are plenty of women everywhere for you to go and do that. You're not limited by what somebody says that this is all that's available and you have to try and make a decision or whatever. It sounds terrible, I know. But that is a definite huge pro. I mean, that's the biggest pro about it. And it's natural. It's just normal, right? So you just meet a woman and you meet her on the street and... You go out for coffee and then it sort of progresses. And this is no different than any other time I've been to any other country in the world. It's normal. It's, it's, that's the only thing I can say, is that it's normal to go and do it that way. The other way of doing it, like you go to these events, you sit opposite each other, you talk to a woman that you're not interested in, and you try and find some sort of a connection, that's not normal. I'm not saying it's wrong at all. I mean, and it does work for people. But I'm just saying that like doing it on the street is normal. But there are a bunch of cons for doing it this way for doing it the natural way the first one is you have to have some sort of game you can't rock up there looking like a mess and being a bumbling idiot and expect to be going on a date with this woman would it happen in your country no so why would it happen over there so you need to have some game you need to have some confidence and that may come in time when you've done it a few times but you need to be able to talk to the woman or at least come up with some way to get in there to talk to her Whereas with one of these companies, that's already sorted for you. You don't need to worry about that. It's catered to guys that are not, that are a little bit more sort of socially awkward, I suppose. So that's a con. That's a con if you have to try and do that and you're not confident in doing that. Language. Language can be a problem because if she doesn't speak English or her English isn't very good, how are you going to communicate with her? It's just you and her. You're going to have to like come up with some hand gestures or maybe some Google Translate and point it like a coffee place and say, let's go or something like that. You're going to have to figure out a way to do that as opposed to with a a company where they give you someone to help you with the translation and it's expected that's expected that you're not going to be able to understand each other so it's easier the other thing is time like it depends on how much time you've got with some of these um, companies people fly in zoop, for like 15 days do seven days at one and then fly out and they expect to well, have chosen like a wife I mean, come on. This is the reason why most of these relationships fail after like two or three months. You need to be spending as much time as possible when you go over there. So if you're trying to do what you do with one, well, what you what you would normally do with one of these companies, which is fly in and then fly out and then try and make it work and then fly back and da da, doesn't really work the same way if you're meeting on the street. You need to think of the street as though it's more close to what would happen in a normal place in your own country. So if you're flying in for 15 days and think that you're going to like meet a woman on the street or working at the coffee cart and then fly out and expect that you're in a relationship, that's not going to happen. She wasn't expecting you to turn up and you just met and maybe you got kind of close for a week and then you moved away. And But what, happen, what happens now? If you're going to be doing it just the natural way, you want to be spending at least one month over there. And you don't want to approach it in the way of, I'm going over there to find a wife, I should have one by Wednesday, by Thursday we should be you know, in a relationship and then by Friday we're going to be talking about coming back. You can't think about it like that. And with a company, yeah, you might be able to sort of think about that similar to that. I don't know, it sounds still a little bit weird. But you're not going to be thinking about it like that. And I most certainly wouldn't be walking around the streets going, well, which one should I talk to? Because that's kind of creepy. If you are going to be doing it the natural way, you want to just go over there and enjoy Ukraine for what it is. Go and see some sites. Maybe go out to see some nice restaurants, see some touristy sort of stuff. But then just talk to women as you, as you come into contact with them. So that's like pros and cons. And I'm sure that there are other ones in there. But I'm just going off my experience. And bear in mind, I haven't done the natural way yet. Okay? I've only done it through the agencies. So I have a lot of experience on that side there. But there's one thing I've missed out on the pros and cons list on both of these things. Because I want to draw it to your attention at the end. And it's an important thing to think about. It's probably the most important thing. If you scratched everything else off and you just boiled it down to this, this one thing, and that is, will she move to your country? Because unless you're going to move over there, you're wasting your time. And the thing that agencies have over the natural way is that the women that have joined the agency that is a legitimate agency and they are legitimate ladies is that they have already got the mindset to move. You may have seen a bunch of videos and seen a whole heap of, um, read a whole heap of blogs and seen a whole heap of stuff, how the women want to all get out of Ukraine because it's so horrible there. 
please listen to me when I tell you that it is not true. If it was true, I would tell you. They don't all want to leave. It is not 20 years ago. When you go over there, if you've never been over there, you'll see for yourself. So trying to figure out if she would move is a huge thing. You might go over there, meet a beautiful woman, you get on well for two weeks, you come back over and see her, and she says, well, I'm not moving anywhere. My parents are sick. I've got to look after them. Well, what are you going to do then? You've just wasted all that time and all that money. If you're in an agency, you know that she's already, if it's a good agency and they're not scammers, you already know that she's willing to move. She's already thought about it. She already wants to move. She, already, she has a desire to find a man and move and be happy with him. If she's legit, on the natural side, there's no the woman's not walking around going, where's a Western man? There he is. I'll go with him and I'll go move. It's not happening. But I also believe that if a woman really is in love with a man and she really wants to be with him, as long as that man is financially secure, I mean, he's not from a third world country that's going to put her back a few steps. If he's from anywhere in the West, she probably will go with him. But that still is a risk. And I have heard stories of guys spending considerable amount of time and money on a woman for her not to be able to leave because of her job or her study or um, her parents or some, some reason. So that's the risk you have to take. As I mentioned before, like I've only ever done the, the, the company or the agency part of this. I've never actually done the whole just cruising around on the street. And it's not because I don't want to, it's just that I haven't had that opportunity. But the next time that I'm there, and I'm going to say this now, that way I can't back out of it. I'm going to go and do this. Now, I don't, I, like I've watched like pick up videos and all that sort of stuff, but I, it's not something that I'm hugely confident about doing because I've never done it before. And if it was a year and a half ago, I wouldn't even dream about doing it because I would just be like way too shy or not confident enough. But since I've been on this journey, and that's why I say to guys, if you're thinking about doing it, go and do it. You'll come out a year later, like more confident. And how could, think about it, how could you not be confident? You've, you've dated a, a ton of women that all want to spend more time with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out on the street and I'm going to see if I can actually do it. I'm going to try and video it to show you guys. I don't know how I'm going to video it yet. Uh, I might just have a microphone and maybe I'll get my friend to, to, to video me doing it. You'll see if I get shot down or you'll see if I'm successful. Um, the reason that I've just put this here at the end of the video is that now I have to do it. So if you want to see that and you want to see if, uh, if it goes well for me, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I don't think either way is right or wrong, depending on how you look at it. And you can be successful in either way and both have pros and cons. So you just have to make a decision that's going to be suited for who you are as an individual. Hopefully the video helps and I'll see you guys next time.